In the next part of this video, we are going to learn about electronegativity. The definition for electronegativity is the relative tendency of an atom to attract electrons to itself when chemically bonded with another atom. Now, we know what electronegativity is, but can electronegativity be measured? And how do we measure electronegativity? Electronegativity is measured using something that we call Pauling scale. The scale is invented by chemists called Linus Pauling. Atoms that has higher electronegativity has stronger attraction for the bonding electrons to itself. This can be determined by looking at the magnitude of the Pauling scale. We have here fluorine and the francium as the example. Fluorine has the highest magnitude of Pauling scale, which is 4.0, while francium has the lowest magnitude of Pauling scale, which is 0 0.7. Fluorine is highly electronegative. Therefore, fluorine has a very strong ability to attract electron towards itself. You can see here, we have hydrogen fluoride molecule that consists of hydrogen and fluorine atom with a covalent bond that bind these two atoms. The covalent bond involves shared pair of electrons and we know covalent bond is the strong electrostatic attraction between a shared pair of electrons and the nucleus of the bonded atoms. We know fluorine is more electronegative than hydrogen. So, the electron pair of the covalent bond spends more of its time around the more electronegative atom, which is fluorine. As a result, we can see here there is higher electron density around the fluorine atom as the shared pair of electrons are attracted more towards fluorine. Now, we have had a look at what electronegativity is and how we measure it. Let's have a look at the trends of electronegativity that we see in periodic table. In general, electronegativity increases across period and decreases down the group. But why do we see this trend? Across a period, the charge on the nucleus increases. What is happening is, as we move across period, the number of protons in the nucleus of the elements increases. The effective nuclear charge also increased, therefore, there will be increase in nucleus attraction towards the valence electron. Tendency to attract bonding electron also increased. Hence, electronegativity increased as we go across the period in the periodic table. Now, down the group, we see there's decrease in electronegativity. Well, that is because down the group, the bonding pair of electron is held increasingly further away from the nucleus. This is because number of shell increase and so is the distance of the valence shell and nucleus. Therefore, screening effect increase. Tendency to attract bonding electron decrease when we go down the group. Hence, electronegativity decrease when we go down the group. For variation of electronegativity, we can conclude that electronegativity increases up a group and across the period. For example, across period 2, the trends of electronegativity is in the ascending order. Lithium in the group 1 has the lowest electronegativity and the electronegativity will increase from lithium to beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, and fluorine in group 17. The same trend is observed for elements in period 3. The order of electronegativity is increasing as we go across the period 3 from sodium in group 1 towards chlorine in group 17. The electronegativity for the sodium is lowest, followed by magnesium, aluminium, silicon, phosphorus, sulfur, and chlorine.
As you can see here, we have a predict table with values below each of the element. These values represent the magnitude of Pauling scale that also describe the strength of electronegativity for the elements. Well, we have learned before that in general, electronegativity increases across period and up a group. Essentially, electronegativity is increasing in all directions towards fluorine because fluorine is the one with the highest magnitude of Pauling scale, which is 4, and therefore it is the most electronegative element in the periodic table. In this final part of video, we are going to study the acid-base character of oxides of elements in period 3. For the oxide form from the elements in period 3, can be categorized in three types, which are basic oxide, amphetory oxide, and acidic oxide. Sodium and magnesium form basic oxides as metal are alkaline. On the other hand, non-metallic oxides which are silicon oxide, phosphorus oxide, sulfur dioxide and chlorine oxides are acidic oxides. In the middle between basic oxides and acidic oxides, we have aluminium oxides which is amphoteric oxides. Amphoteric oxide can behave both in acidic and basic manners depending on the condition. Next, we are going to go deeper about the characteristic of basic oxides, amphoteric oxides, and acidic oxides. Basic oxides. Sodium and magnesium are metals, so their oxides are basic. We have here balanced equations that show the formations of these oxides. Sodium oxide and magnesium oxide are basic because it dissolves readily in water to form basic solution which is sodium hydroxide and also magnesium hydroxide. Basic oxide can also react with acid to form salts and water. Sodium oxide and magnesium oxide shows no reaction with base such as sodium hydroxide as they are already basic. Amphoteric oxides. Aluminium oxide is unusual because not only it can react with acid and act as a base, but it will also react with base and act as an acid. Something that has both acidic and basic properties is called amphoteric. Aluminium oxide is insoluble in water, so there is no reaction to describe the reactions between the aluminium oxide and water. Since Aluminum oxide is amphoteric, it can react in acidic condition to produce salt and water. Aluminum oxide can also react in the basic condition such as in sodium hydroxide to also produce salt. On the acidic side, both metalloids and non-metals form acidic oxides. For acidic oxides, when it dissolves in water, they combine to form acidic solution. Phosphorus oxides can present in the form of P4O10 and P4O6. Phosphorus oxide P4O10 dissolve in water to make phosphoric acid H3PO4. Sulfuric oxides dissolve in water to form sulfuric acid and chloric oxides form chloric acid. HClO4. Metallic oxides, as it is an acidic oxide, it doesn't react in acidic condition. Acidic oxides can react with alkaline solutions such as sodium hydroxide and neutralize it. Salt and water is produced from the neutralization between acidic oxides and base. Silicon oxides as IO2 as it is gigantic molecule, it is not going to dissolve in water, but it is capable in neutralizing base and form salt and water.